Welcome to the south coast of Iceland, Reynesfjara Beach, a uh, black sand beach. Some really powerful surf conditions here. Um, swinging over towards the west, we have a sea arch here. We're going to head out there in a bit, but thanks for joining me today. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here leading a, a group of folks on a geology tour of Iceland's great and amazing sites. And this is one of the more photogenic sites we see on the south coast. Uh, and the main attraction, aside from the ocean, are these well-formed columns, these beautiful, perfect, hexagonal columns in the basalt. And these have been interpreted as forming from a sill rather than a lava flow. So these actually been interpreted as being an intrusion of magma rather than a lava flow at the surface. Um, we're gonna head around the corner here, a little bit windy, and there's a sea cave and we'll look at these columns from below where you can really see and appreciate the shape of the columns there. Hopefully get out of the wind a little bit. Some sea stacks here off the coast. And again, these waves can be really big here. At times, people get blown out or carried out to sea a bit. Almost around the corner. So here we go. If we head into the sea cave, uh, and look up, you can see some of these nicely formed, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. This one I think has six or seven. So they're not always perfect hexagons. Um, sometimes they're pentagons or heptagons, or septagons, whatever seven is. Um, but really nice view of the underside of these columns here. out towards the ocean again really just powerful waves there's a sharp drop in the coastline there so as the waves come in they they break quite powerfully uh, right there just a few maybe 20 30 yards offshore uh, again view of the underside of these I guess the best hexagons are over on this side for the columns remember that these columns will always form perpendicular to the cooling direction. So if we have a sill, if we have a horizontal intrusion of magma, then we would expect it to cool from the top and the bottom and give us nice vertical uh, columns over time versus if we had a dike that was vertically vertical, the cooling would take place from the sides of that dike and you would end up with horizontal columns. Another view here of uh, these big sea cliffs. And you can imagine the power of the ocean in eroding these things down over time. We're going to head a little bit further down the beach and see if we can see anything else. This massive ridge here, see if we can back up a bit, but being careful to turn our back to the ocean. Maybe we'll just head out here for a second. The waves are as easily as good an attraction as the, the geology. There's some of those sea stacks there. You can see these powerful swells coming in. And then again, these columns. And what I was hoping to see here, you can see it in the shadows, is actually a, a dike and a tree there that forms those steeper columns up there. But this um, cliff face and mountain above me is another one of these uh, subglacial volcanoes where most of the material was erupted beneath ice. Probably initially formed some pillow lavas at the base as the ice pressure on top of the volcano kept the, the lava from expanding or the ice, the water from flashing to steam. Then eventually you had um, less ice and water so it became more explosive. So what we're 
we're looking for here uh, is some exposures other than the columns of some pillow basalts or maybe the fragmented material which is the the breccia or the hyaloclastite material let's walk down the beach a little bit it's just so beautiful here black sand beach the ocean although the winds really kicking today and a second ago I was just getting pelted with sand uh, from the backside some more kind of crude columns in here uh, and then as you look up higher it becomes a little bit more brown and that's very likely the more fragmented uh, breccia we can see some big blocks of it here that have fallen off the cliff face Ooh, more sand blasting there uh, but you can see the big chunks glued together off of this material here so this would be again that sort of second phase in the subglacial volcano uh, evolution where there's less ice and water but enough that it can uh, flash the water to steam and that expansion fragments the lava and sort of shreds it up it's nice and sunny you might be able to see some of the black shiny material the glassy nature of the basalt in places uh, other spots where it's a little more orange this is an alteration product called uh, pelagonite that often shows up in these rocks so go down a little further take you with me on this tour um, I don't know if I've walked this far down the beach before so we'll explore this together again more great columns here from these intrusions of magma another little sea cave back in here if we see anything else oh this is actually great over here so the columns here are smaller in size and they're lying more on their sides so you can get a great view here hopefully the lighting is is good and helpful um, of these columns Let me back up a little bit this way there we go so you can see these columns coming straight at you and, and down a bit here um, so beautifully formed columns a little bit thinner than the ones we saw uh, back up the beach a bit uh, we'll go a little bit further it looks like there's a few more columns and then maybe wake our way out here and see what other geologic gems we might find more columns but then we're starting to see some of the fragmented breccia hyaloclastite material keeping an eye on the ocean making sure it's not going to get me Oh, and this is great here so you can actually see i'm kind of making this up as i go but we can see some columns coming in from the left uh slightly dipping this way another set of columns coming in from the right and you can see the suture line there so without looking at this too much longer my quick guess and hunch would be that we've got a vertical or nearly vertical dike and we've got cooling taking place from the left side here moving into the interior of the magma body so at the same time we've got cooling going on from this side coming in and where these two fracture sets meet we've got a nice little seam there because uh, they don't always line up perfectly so you sometimes get some uh, offset or uh, overlap in there so pretty nice uh, and i wanted to look at some of this brown material out this way which is i'm assuming more of the Hyaloclastite. I didn't see any pillow lavas during our little journey down this way. View back up the beach and looking up at this cliff, probably uh, maybe 100 meters, about 300 feet, I would guess, in terms of height. Some folks down here taking pictures hopefully watching the waves more wind and then again just the pounding nature of the water here just completely drowns the rocks so you can see these dish-shaped rocks and cobbles here 
definitely want to watch the ocean here because the sand is wet. But yeah, it looks like it's more of this bedded, you can see in the boulders here, bedded hyaloclastite material. In places it's more brecciated, broken up into angular clasts. I was hoping we might be able to see a low exposure of some pillow lavas, but I'm not seeing that right off the bat. We'll go around one more little point here. Make sure the spice factor is not too high with the water. And then we'll call it good. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing any classic pillow lavas, but beautiful view of the two sea stacks out there, which can't tell with the lighting, just presumably more resistant rock types sitting just offshore. But part of the same material we have over here. Here comes the water. I don't want to go around that point. That'll probably be it for me. So signing off real quick here. Thanks for joining me on this little excursion here on the south coast of Iceland on a sunny day, finally. Uh, but the wind's always blowing. Don't let the Instagram photos fool you. Uh, the weather conditions can be pretty extreme and miserable here. But if you got the right gear and you're willing to endure that, uh, it's a great landscape, a great place to explore. Thanks again. Uh, if you'd like to, there's donate buttons on the banner of my homepage. There's a, a, soup, a thanks button just to the right of the viewer on the bottom. And under the video description, there's links where you can uh, provide donations if you'd like to, to help me keep doing these videos and sharing these wonderful places with you. So thanks so much from the south coast of Iceland.